the Allosaurus, the king and lion of the Jurassic, the apex predator that we continue to learn about today, known as one of the most popular dinosaurs to exist. G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host here to teach you about Allosaurus in today's case study. As always, if you do enjoy, don't forget to like and subscribe, it would help a bunch. Anyways, let's get into the video, starting off with this creature's origins. Origins and Evolution The Allosaurus is a well-known genus of large theropod dinosaur that lived during the late Jurassic period, approximately 160 to 145 million years ago. It was a carnivorous predator and one of the most dominant predators of its time. The evolution of the Allosaurus is part of the broader evolutionary history of theropod dinosaurs. Allosaurus belonged to the family known as Allosauroidae and was characterized by its large size, sharp teeth, powerful jaws and distinctive features such as crests and ridges on its skull. The exact evolutionary origins of the Allosaurus is still being studied and debated upon by paleontologists today but it is generally believed that it is a descendant of earlier theropods that lived during the Middle Jurassic period. It was part of the same diverse group of theropods, which was expansive and included Acrocanthosaurus, Giganotosaurus, and Charodontosaurus, just to name a few. However, I will note that these dinosaurs are more in a secluded part of this family and not directly related. Allosaurus itself went through several stages of evolution during its existence. Different species of Allosaurus lived at various times and places where they exhibited various sizes, skull structures, and other features. Some of the most notable species of the Allosaurus genus include Allosaurus fragilis, Allosaurus europaeus, and Allosaurus jimidensi. Over time, Allosaurus species adapted to different ecological niches and environmental conditions. They were likely apex predators in their ecosystem, preying on herbivorous dinosaurs, including sauropods and ornithopods. It's important to note that our understanding of these dinosaurs is continually evolving as new discoveries are made through scientific research. If you are interested in the most up-to-date information of the evolution of the Allosaurus, I'd always recommend consulting your closest museum. But what exactly did they evolve? Physical Attributes Allosaurus varied in size, depending on the species, but in general, they were large dinosaurs. Its average length measured to 28 feet and its height 12 feet, with its weight to be estimated to be between 2.3 to 2.7 tons. The largest and most well-known species of Allosaurus was Allosaurus fragilis, which could have reached lengths up to 36 feet. The West Virginia Geological and Economic Survey Museum suggests that large members could reach 2.7 to 5.5 tons. After scientists completed biomechanical analysis, it became evident that the skull was very strong, yet had a relatively small bite force. By using jaw muscles only, it could produce a bite of 805 to 8,700 newtons. What's weird is that the skull could withstand nearly 55,000 newtons of force against the tooth row. This is where the theory is used for Allosaurus that it hunted and attacked much like a hatchet, where it would use its powerful neck to slam its skull against its prey. This would then pierce slice and cut the prey up, ultimately causing them to bleed out. And with all this size, you'd expect it to be slow, right? Nut. The Allosaurus wasn't a slowpoke. According to William Sellers and Philip Manning from the University of Manchester, it is likely that the Allosaurus could reach speeds of 15 to 24 miles per hour. This would easily allow it to catch up to much of the larger prey of the Jurassic, as well as ambush the smaller and more agile dinosaurs. But with these physical attributes, how were they distributed? What environment did they live in? That's what we're going to look into next. Distribution and habitat. Distribution and habitat were influenced by the geological and environmental conditions of the time. Allosaurus fossils have been found primarily in Western North America, which included the now United States, but it was also discovered in other parts such as Europe, particularly Portugal. Some of the known American states where Allosaurus fossils have been discovered include Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and Oklahoma. These fossils are often associated with rocks from the Morrison Formation, a geological unit known for its rich assemblage of late Jurassic dinosaurs. During the late Jurassic, the habitat of Allosaurus was characterized by a combination of open floodplains, river systems, and forested areas. The Morrison Formation, where many Allosaurus fossils have been discovered, represents a diverse ecosystem that includes a variety of dinosaur species, both herbivores and carnivores. The landscape of the Jurassic was dominated by large sauropods, 
such as Apatosaurus and Diplodocus, as well as various types of herbivorous ornithopod dinosaurs. Allosaurus occupied the role of a top predator in this ecosystem, preying on many of these herbivores. Its adaption, such as the powerful jaws and sharp teeth mentioned, suggested that it was well suited for both hunting and scavenging throughout the habitat. The Morrison Formation's environment consists of meandering rivers, floodplains, and seasonal wetlands. These habitats would have provided ample opportunities for prey to gather, which Allosaurus could have taken advantage of. The presence of both forested and open areas suggests that Allosaurus could adapt its hunting strategies to different settings, despite the various habitats. As with any ancient ecosystem, our understanding of Allosaurus' habitat is based on the interpretations of the geological and paleontological evidence available, and ongoing research continues to refine our understanding about this. Yet we've mentioned a lot about hunting, but exactly how did they hunt, and what did they hunt? Hunting. As we know, since Allosaurus was a carnivorous dinosaur, it partook in hunting. Its hunting strategies and behaviour is a topic of interest amongst not only us, but paleontologists. While we can't observe Allosaurus directly due to them being, well, extinct, scientists have inferred certain aspects of its hunting behavior based on the anatomy, fossil evidence, and comparisons with modern predators. Allosaurus would have likely used an ambush and pursuit strategy when hunting, depending on the prey. It might have relied on its keen sense of smell and vision to detect potential prey for a distance, and then it would have used its powerful hind limbs to quickly close the distance. Its robust skull, equipped with those sharp teeth designed for slicing through flesh, would have allowed it to be effective in inflicting deep wounds on its prey, causing significant bleeding and hence weakening the target. Being a dominant predator of the region, they hunted a majority of the dinosaurs that roamed around its territory. This included one of the most famous of all dinosaurs, the Stegosaurus. Now hunting this dinosaur would not have been easy, as in 1914, Paleontologist C.W. Gilmore described three Stegosaurus tail spikes which were discovered that were broken or malformed. This suggested that the dinosaur would have slammed its tail into something hard enough for it to break and malform the spikes. A dinosaur that large swinging it at that force would have easily destroyed almost any predator around, including Allosaurus. Furthermore, at the 2014 annual meeting of the Geological Society of America, Mossbrucker and his colleagues reported an Allosaur pelvis bone with a stab wound that was inconical in shape. This suggested that a tail spike from a Stegosaurus was the wound inflictor. The bone showed no evidence of healing, suggesting that the stab wound was fatal to the carnivore. Allosaurus at the very least had confrontations with the herbivore and wasn't always successful in its hunting. As surprising as this may be, sauropods appear to be a plausible candidate for both direct predation and scavenging. This is supported by the evidence of well-feeding Allosaurus tooth scrapings on sauropod bones and the discovery of Allosaur teeth being found alongside sauropod remains. These would have likely indicated that Allosaurus would have hunted Apatosaur and Diplodocus, although it is highly unlikely they would have tried hunting healthy sauropods. In 1988, Gregory Paul suggested that Allosaurus likely did not prey on fully mature sauropods due to the fact that their skull was moderately sized and had relatively small teeth. To successfully hunt a target this large, Allosaurus might have needed to hunt in groups, especially considering the substantial weight difference between itself and the sauropods. However, in my opinion, if Allosaurus didn't hunt in packs, then I think it would have most likely just hunted juvenile sauropods or ones that weren't particularly healthy as hunting a full-grown apatosaur would just spell death for most carnivals. Its diet would have also included ornithopods, such as Dryosaurus. This would have acted as a safer option, however, it would have been harder to catch on the account of it being fast and agile, which may have made it not worth it for an allosaur to spend energy on. But surely, with all this food around, it wasn't the only competitor, was it? Competitors. The second most famous carnival that lived along Allosaurus was the Ceratosaurus. This theropod, however, was a lot smaller than the Allosaur, being around half its size. In all honesty, I doubt that these two would have combated much as they took up directly opposing niches. Allosaurus would have hunted the larger, more powerful prey, while Ceratosaurus would have hunted the smaller prey. I often see them being compared to lions and leopards, and I agree. However, as with lions and leopards, if an Allosaur caught a Ceratosaurus in its territory, I wouldn't be surprised if they took the competition out. The next on the list is the Torvosaurus. Now, the relationship between these two is actually quite interesting. This is because when we view the species of the two that are in two different areas, we see two different stories. In North America, 
Allosaurus was the more dominant predator, growing larger on average. However, when we look at Portugal, Torvosaurus was the larger of the two. This just shows how different environments and the course of evolution can affect a food chain and the ecosystems of the animals that lived around them, even if they are of the same genus. Either way though, I believe that these two would have competed significantly, as they were both large with not too big of a difference between the two, making them perfect competitors for the same prey. Now the last of Allosaurus's significant competitors was the Saurophaganax. Now this theropod is, well, a unique one. This is because there's an ongoing debate whether or not it's its own genus or directly part of the Allosaurus genus. At one point, it was given the name Allosaurus Maximus, which just shows how certain paleontologists were that it was part of the Allosaurus genus. Now, if we're taking it as its own genus, then I would have to put this as the apex predator of the region. It was simply much larger than Allosaurus, Torvosaurus, and Ceratosaurus, and although I can see them definitely competing, I think Saurophaganus could have been one of the most successful predators during the late Jurassic. Now, despite Allosaurus being so successful, I already know what you're going to ask. How did this animal go extinct? Well, let's get into that. Extinction. I would speculate that the Allosaurus met its fate through the natural course of species existence which is succumbing to natural environmental changes and adapting into new forms over time. It appears plausible that significant periods of drought may have afflicted the floodplains in Western North America during the late Jurassic era. Such climatic shifts could have led to the substantial reductions in populations of food and then hence the Allosaurus's food and then hence Allosaurus. Additionally, the departure or decline of large herbivorous dinosaurs, as just mentioned, would have contributed to the scarcity of resources impacting the availability of food for not only Allosaurus but its competitors. It's important to note though that the extinction of Allosaurus could be viewed from a broader perspective as with many species its disappearance may not have been at an abrupt end but rather a transition into a new evolutionary form. The evolutionary trajectory of dinosaur genre often follows a rapid progression typically spanning 5 to 10 million years before making a way more advanced descendant or related species which shared similar characteristics which can be traced back to a common ancestor. In this context of Allosaurus, its departure from the regions it inhabited potentially paved the way for the emergence of advanced members within its own clade. Notable examples include Acrocanthosaurus, Cyats, Carocarodontosaurus, just to name those few, which showcase the continuous flow of evolution within a broader lineage. I think we can all agree that the Allosaurus was an amazing specimen. A carnival that was large but not too large, fast but not too fast, powerful but not too powerful. It fit a niche of being a jack of all trades I would say. I don't know about you guys but this one is actually one of my favourite dinosaurs. Not only that but the time it lived in showed so many different types of dinosaurs from Stegosaurus to Ceratosaurus. I mean hey, who couldn't love it? Well now we've reached the end of the video. And I hope you all enjoyed. For those of you that don't know, this video was actually picked from a vote, so keep your eye on the community tab in case any other votes come up. Now, if you all enjoyed, as referenced before, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe and comment down below. It helps far more than you could imagine. And if you have any other maybe videos that you want me to cover, then I would be more than happy to take a look. Don't forget to drop that below. And well, I'll see you all next time.